Welcome to another episode of Morning Meds, FamTFamily.com's devotional spot for males to meditate on Yahweh's word for good success. We're grateful that you are continuing on our march through the scriptures. And today we are on the title, How Have We Spoken Against You? This is from Malachi 3 verses 11 to 18 in the Holy Bible, key verses verse 14. We yesterday looked at how to love one another and loving one another is not giving in to the whims and to each other's whims and fancies. God's, God does not do that for us. Many of us have prayed for so many things, prayed for money, prayed for good health. When we're in trouble, we pray for God to get us out, even though the trouble is to teach us a lesson. So it's not good. it would not be, teach us a good lesson. So it's good for God to leave us in that trouble so we can learn. So it's good that we understand that God does not give us everything we want. He gives us all good things. So we, and that's Matthew 7 to 14, and on the topic of love, love is not being a simp for our families. Love is to give good things to our families. Malachi 3, 11 to 18, we're on the topic today of repentance. How do we change our minds? How, to, how do we turn away from making bad choices, unloving choices, to making loving choices? Malachi 3, 11 to 18 from the King James Version reads, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against you? You have said, It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, say the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man speareth his own son that serveth him. Verse 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the, the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth it not. You know what, let's get another interpretation of this. Let's read the, King, the Good News translation, Matthew 3, Ma, sorry, Malachi 3. Let me just bring that up. Um, okay, Malachi, not Matthew. Malachi 3. And this is verses 11 to 18. All right, so let's read. Uh, we're reading from the Good News Translation. Thank you for your patience. All right, here we go. I will not let insects destroy your crops, and your grapevines will be loaded with grapes. Then the people of all nations will call you happy, because your land will be a good place to live in. You said terrible things about me, says the Lord. But you ask, what have we said about you? You have said, it's useless to serve God. What's the use of doing what he says or trying to show the Lord Almighty that we're sorry for what we have done? As we see it, proud people are the ones who are happy. Evil people not only prosper, but they test God's patience with their evil deeds and get away with it. Then the people who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard what they said. In his presence there was written down in a book a record of those who feared the Lord and respected him. They will be my people, says the Lord Almighty. On the day when I act, they will be my very own. I will be merciful to them, as a father is merciful to the son who serves him. Once again, 
my people will see the difference between what happens to the righteous and to the wicked, to the person who serves me and the one who does not. So in verse 14, the key here is, the key is verse 14 here, as God takes notice of the words of judgment and complaining that we speak. So verse 14, you have said it's useless to serve God. What's the use of doing what he says or of trying to show the Lord Almighty that we're sorry for what we have done? And verse 13 says, you have said terrible things about me, says the Lord. But you ask, what have you said? What have we said about you? You have said it's useless to serve God. And he continues. So we understand that it's terrible when people, we are, we are in a, a state today and it's unfortunate that we have a society that honors money more than morals. And that is because we see money, but often morals is something, a moral choice is something that's internal. You can look at someone and say that's a rich person or that's a poor person, but you can't really look at someone and see whether they're moral or not. You have to, sometimes someone can even be doing something that seems good, but the morality behind it is wrong. They're doing it from a perspective of not serving or doing what is right for the Lord but they want to do what's right for them. Sometimes someone helps out a poor person just to get a tax break. Now, is it helping a poor person good? Could be. It's a good act. It's an act that seems good. But when you attach a bad intention to a good act, you make a good act bad. And that's from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 4. So here, we, we speak against God when we encourage people not to worship him, when we encourage people to look at what's going on in the world and see that it's vain to serve the Lord. It makes no sense to serve the Lord. And many people are teaching their families that religion is now outdated. Religion is not something that can benefit your family. You need to be more, be more scientific. And now what we're doing is making science become our religion. We worship a confidence interval. We worship carbon, carbon dating. That's now our new God. So verse 14 is key. It says that um, we want to take note, God takes notice of our words of judgment and complaining. I believe David says in Psalm, might be 22, that God inhabits the praises of his people. And a popular pastor, Bill Johnson, says if, if God inhabits the praises of his people, if, he's feel, if he is made welcome when we praise him, who inhabits the complaining of his people? And the, the rhetorical answer must be the devil. If God inhabits the praises of his people, then the devil must inhabit when we judge God, when we complain against him. So God says here that he took notice of the words of judgment and complaining, and that we speak against him, particularly when we compare evil people's lives to ours. Now, we should not place strings or conditions on our worship of God. When we worship God, it must be we are worshiping him because of who he is. He doesn't have to do anything for us, for us to worship him. Now, does he do something for us? Yes, we have life, we have breath, we have existence. So God always does things for us. But at the end of the day, we as humans, when we are in trouble, when we have needs that we think are unmet, and we feel that God is not helping to meet those needs, and then we see other people who don't worship God, they don't tithe, they don't go to church, they, they, they don't, um, their children don't go to Sunday school, they don't make any sacrifice for God, but yet still they are on the Fortune 500, they are on the Forbes list of the richest persons in our, in our, in our communities, etc. Those people seem to be having good success, they seem to be successful. We're not sure if it's good success, but it is success anyway, based on what the world calls success. And then now, we say we are, are wasting our time and our children are wasting their time to serve the Lord. We don't want to spend time in his word, etc., because our investment is not paying off. We're not getting an ROI on our worship. So we're saying here we should not place strings or conditions of worship. Then it becomes investment. We, come, we become false religious people. 
when we give out of tradition and condition our giving and receiving from God, not to show our love for God, we retard worship by being covetous of people, or in the islands we say bad mind, or red eye, we say, of people who do not worship God in giving and seem to be successful. Now Yahweh takes account of our motives, and those who fear him will experience his faithfulness in their earthly lives and beyond. But our motives must be sincere and joyful in giving and other forms of worship. So we speak against God when we make a claim against God, we make a case against God when we complain and when we do things without the right motives.